All right, hi, this is Coach MK Fleming of Another Mother Runners Train Like a Mother Club. That's www.trainlikeamother.club. Right now, I'm about to quickly demonstrate. I don't have time to go through the whole routine. We've had a rough morning. Everything that was supposed to happen at 9 has been bumped till 11, so I'm running out to take a sick baby to the pediatrician because why not? Yay, it's going to be that kind of day, y'all. As we slide into the holidays, she said, namaste, namaste, motherfucker. Here we go. So, for those of you that are doing three days at the fair, you're seeing Ass Fire and Damnation coming into play in a few weeks. Uh, Julie, this is going to be starting for you later this week, once we've really recovered from that 50K you decided to yellow. This is going to be more ankle strength and balancing and kind of that, that glute coordination that comes with the hips, as well as the lats. We're going to start recruiting those. The most important thing to remember, and I'll demonstrate this as we get a little further into it, at no point, we want to make sure we don't have that crunching going on in the neck. We want to be pressing the scapulas down. Don't think about pressing the shoulders down because what happens if you think about the shoulders, then the body tends to bow forward and we don't want that. We just want those scapulas pressed firmly down as far as they'll go. So think about these muscles being turned on and pushed. We try, again, not making bad decisions, trying to push the shoulders back. All right, so uh, you'll also see the word releve a lot, and this is all a releve is. From someone that never, that was literally it. This, from someone that has never really done ballet. Mom says I took it for a year when I was a kid, but I don't really remember that at all. find it hard to believe we had ballet of any sort in uh, Smith County, Tennessee, but whatever. Uh, releve just means to, grow, to rise on your toes. And it can just, heels off the ground, it can be this, it can be this. Higher is not necessarily better. Good form and balanced is better. This is a sickle. Watch what I'm doing right now with my feet. That's a sickle. We don't want that. We want the weight distributed pretty much Oh, well, it's going to be mostly on the ball of your foot, but your pinky toe touching the ground as well for a little bit of added support. Not pushing inward, never bowing inward, no dumping into the ankles like I'm doing right now. Always want to maintain control, feeling the, not just the ball of your foot press into the ground, but the tarsal of your second toe. That knuckle next to the ball of your foot, we want that knuckle pressing into the ground as well. Balance is really going to come from the pressure distributed between those two bones. If you have a neuroma, and this is exquisitely painful, then you don't want to be super high up. We just want to have a little bit of your heel off the ground. A centimeter, a fraction will do. What the second your heel uh, lifts off the ground, you're going to be struggling a little bit for balance, and that's okay because remember the ball of your foot <clears throat> is called such because it's round. So yeah, if you're wobbling, that's totally normal. That's actually biologically like a thing. So here we go, as fire and damnation. The first one, I say releve squat, squat pulse. This is what I mean by that. You wanna have no more than, it can be a little bit less than depending on the band that you use, but no more than uh, two fists between um, your, uh, the arches of your feet. Go into a squat, lift your heels off the ground, a little motion up and down. If you feel the scratching behind your kneecap, double check uh, the, your feet, your foot position, what's going on. The pressure should be on the ball of your foot. If it's a little bit on that, in, if it's a little too far inside or a little too far outside, what you'll get as you pulse will feel like runner's knee. Now remember, this is not a bounce. This is not what we're going for. I don't know what that is. We're getting nice and low, up an inch, down an inch, up an inch, down an inch, up an inch, down an inch. That is a pulse. That is what we're doing. All the motion, the rising and the falling comes from your glutes. All right, so that's the releve squat pulse. The second one is the releve squat pulse with arm circles. Again, this is a, a subtle move. Down into the squat, heels off the ground, arms straight out with, with hands in, in fists, uh, fists facing the floor, tiny circles as you pulse. Not big arm circles. It should be like so tiny it's imperceptible. And the thought here is that all motion comes from, um, from, your, from your shoulder joints. So when you're down and you're doing that arm circle, you should feel it flexing right in here. Okay? Be cognizant that your shoulders are, your shoulder blades are pressing down your back as much as possible. Whew. Then the releve knee flies, same thing. Into the squat, heel off the ground, 
arms out, pressing outwards, a tiny pulse with each circle of your arms. Again, lats engaged, all of the muscles of your armpits engaged to make those arm circles happen. Um, then, you've seen these before in desk series two, baby monsters, but adding a releve now on really tired glutes. So, down, and again, this is always an exaggerated squat. This is not what we're going for. Down. Tap out, tap in. Make sure that knee is going out with it. No, I don't want to see that. I want to see this. So like, think of, again, rotating in the socket, stepping out and in. while balancing on the ball of that foot. So we're gonna do mid on the left foot, and mid on the right foot. So that's ass fire. <laughs> Aptly named, as you'll see. Ass fire, um, it's a five minute circuit. I want you to do that five minute circuit three times a day, whenever you can throughout the day. Damnation is a little bit different. It's harder to get what we need from your arms um, at work because you guys are three days at the fair or at that point in the cycle when we really need to worry about the integrity of your back and the way that we do that. Um, whew, sorry. Hi. And the way that we do that is to make sure is to move um, into picking up heavier things as we squat lower and lower. Right, Shiloh? Go say hi. Show me your sunburn. Shiloh got sunburned yesterday skiing because daddy forgot sunscreen. Hi. <laughs> Red little face. <laughs> so, damnation can be done once a day. More if you can, but don't stress out about it. All we need to do is make sure that we are, uh, when we're doing hard work, that we're recruiting these muscles, the lateral muscles, the obliques, when we're reaching, when we're pulling, and when we're running. Because this is part of your core as well. It's just not what we think about. So when I talk about the cage, we are going to be hitting all the individual parts of the cage. We're just not going to be talking about them because all anyone wants to think about are abs. And that's fine. Abs are important. But we, if they're not, if your TVA is not firing by now, we got much bigger problems. So, elevated plank. i got to go in just a minute. All right, so here's what an elevated plank is. I like to do it with a BOSU, but that's just me. Elevated. Don't go crazy with it. We just want to have your feet elevated off the ground. I choose this step, which is maybe six inches. This goes well with ass fire, or especially after ass fire, because you need your glutes engaged in order to balance. Making sure your elbows are going back, pressing directly underneath you with, those, with that big engaged booty doing its job. You can do it on the ground or with the BOSU. I'm a BOSU, I just, me personally, I prefer the BOSU because that uh, movement uh, back and forth is gonna help keep your core engaged. And I still need those cues right now. So that's the, ele sorry, elevated plank would be not what I just did. It'd be in the same position, whoop, but holding, holding for plank for a minute. So hold for a plank for a minute, then go into elevated push-ups for a minute. After that, Russian twists. You guys have seen it before. If you are ready, and remember, the most advanced thing you can do is listen to your body. Getting this done is better. If you're not ready to go directly to the BOSU, there's not something wrong with you. You're not weak. And forcing yourself to do something that you aren't quite strong enough to do yet, and doing it incorrectly, is not better. So. The goal is to get here, to get strong enough to get here, not to fake it till you make it. All right, so that Russian twist, the idea is to find that balance on top of your sits bones, twist left and right. With as little movement in your hips as possible. We don't want your hips going from side to side. We want your obliques engaging. We want your, your booty on and controlling the movement with that left to right twist. 
And if you start on the ground, that is fine too. I want to hear thunder. When you do it, it should be a bigger twist when you're not struggling for stability. I can't really do thunder because I got a sleeping baby. <laughs> but slap in the ground with the opposite hand with each turn. Keeping your knees together as much as possible. Okay. So there for the Russian twist for a minute. What did I say the last one was? Whew. The twisting side plank. Okay. That. Again, you may use a booster, you don't have to. Get into that side plank position using your obliques, engaging all of these muscles in here. Arm up, face your hand, touch the ground, twist. Notice how my hips are staying stable. You're not like, your whole body does not twist. Right, you stay here. Think of it more like a reach. When you're ready, we can add a weight. No more than two pounds. But remember, listening to your body is what we wanna do. Jumping directly into something more advanced that you're not quite strong enough to do yet is not what we need to do because if you're not quite strong enough to do it yet, you're going to recruit your traps and your neck muscles, and we want to avoid that. This whole twist, this rotation, is designed to get this muscle right here. You can see it flexing on me. We want to get that muscle activating in the rotation because this, when this muscle activates, it takes the obliques along with it. And that's going to help you stay upright the longer you're out there, the longer the race goes on, and the more tired you get over time. So, oh my gosh, I'm jealous. Hi, Christine. Totally jealous here in Israel. Feel free to enjoy a little ass fire if you want to while you're over there. Um, I'd rather you wait a little bit more, di uh, 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 Digital Seuss. Reason being, you and the others, Julie's a little bit ahead of you. Um, I would rather you work on strength in that ankle integrity um, first, and then maybe we'll see adding the releve next week. But since we're just getting right back into it, um, I would rather make sure we're hitting the neuromuscular patterning the way it needs to happen. So I would, again, jumping ahead um, isn't better. So don't go directly into the releve yet. Let's give it one good week um, before trying the releve. And we'll see how it goes. Post your videos in the um, in the in the strength group, and I'm totally happy to look and say, "Hey, you're ready to go." But chances are pretty good if you're still not squatting low enough with your heel on the ground, then you're not ready to releve. So, and again, I'm trying. It's so hard to come up with perspective for what low enough looks like. But this this is really what I'm kind of going for. See that angle between my knee and my booty. Most of you guys are right here, and that is a squat, true, but we want to get down like we're sitting in a chair, really far down. Shifting weight just a little bit, teeny tiny pulses, resisting the urge to rise as you go, okay? So lower is always better, and that is why the lower you are, the, lower you are, the more glute recruiting you're going to do. The higher up you are, the more quad recruiting you're going to do as you struggle for balance on your ankles, and that's why we're not too, we don't want to be in a hurry to releve. Um, I did say death series too, you guys. Monthly plans, you'll be seeing it soon. Yay! I'm, yes, those, I'm sure people with larger chests have a hard time making thunder. I just don't know what your life is like. So, <laughs> do whatever you can. Just make sure you're getting an exaggerated twist and that you're recruiting these muscles. And sometimes, some of my clients with larger chests will find that just trying to press their scapulas back with that twist will be enough to do it. Whereas people with smaller chests like me will often cheat and twist a little too much. So that scapula back with the twisting motion, when you press that back, you should feel all of this fire and that's what we're going for. So if you want to put a looser loop uh, between your wrists with your hands facing together, keep those shoulders back, that neck elongated and do your Russian twist like that. If you have a bigger chest, that's a good way to go and get the same thing we need out of that move. Um, the strength group is for uh, my private clients, I'm sorry, doing three days at the fair. Um, everybody else, 
that is currently enrolled in a Train Like a Mother um, heart rate program. Feel free if you want to try this, go for it. Feel free and toss the video into the Facebook group that you're already in. Tag me in it and I will gladly come critique your form. Yay! Sweet. So, I have to run now, um, but I will be, like I said, my day's gone to shite. I will be back on later, uh, hopefully going through this entire circuit myself. Uh, rem reminder, it is a 10 minute circuit with it, which includes if you were to go from Hellfire to Damnation with a one minute break in the middle, start to finish, that is a 10 minute circuit. The first part, Ask Fire, is a five minute circuit to be done three times a day. You only have to worry about that one minute break if you're repeating the circuit or if you're moving directly from Ask Fire to Damnation. So don't overthink it, don't overstress it. If you want to overachieve, that's great, but ask me what overachieving looks like before trying to do something that's more, that's that advanced isn't better. Advanced is the idea of like, I've gotten all the benefit I can out of this, now what? We can always add a layer, but going directly to that super complicated layer isn't necessarily better if you're like using bad form like this and recruiting your neck and your traps. And that's fine if you really want a big neck, awesome. I know a lot of dudes do and that's okay, but that's we can do that with different moves that are more anatomically correct. What we're trying to get out of this is just recruiting that little muscle right there. You can see it moving and flexing under my finger. We're trying to isolate and get that to move in tandem with our arms because that's gonna move our rhomboids as well, especially if you're running with the camelback, with the Nathan. Um, granted, most people at three days at the fair won't be, but Julie, you've got another race before then, and I expect you will be wearing a Nathan or a camelback during that. So this is doubly important for you as you get tired with those straps, don't want everything coming forward. That, gets, that, that C spine is what we get when we've been sitting at a desk uh, for a long time during a day and your ribs can move out of place. That can get exquisitely painful with the tiniest bit of uh, uh, weight shifting in that backpack from one point to another. We just need to make sure that your back is strong enough to keep your ribs in place and bad things don't happen and that starts with these muscles activating through either pushbacks or circles. Yay! Good stuff. Show me your strength. I'll see you later. You're coached. You're loved. Go win at Tuesday, Monday. What day is it? Fuck.